So here's kind of a, a final overview before I put this uh, the Learjet uh, pressure panel LCD into uh, well the panel in the Lear. So uh, this is uh, this is fired up FSX is running in the background. You'll see what I did. I apologize for the lighting. Um, I've got two encoders interface now, just like is actually on the panel. And uh, what we can do is. Uh, when FSX boots up, the uh, the panel will be off by default, so I'll click the avionics off, and I uh, I can do that with the master electrical too. I can move it either way. I just chose the avionics because I'm not sure what bus it's linked to just yet. I haven't looked up, but uh, that works pretty easy. So when FSX fires up, the panel will be off. Um, top line is our change rate, center is cabin delta, and bottom line is uh, cabin altitude. So uh, the airport's actually at 705 feet here. Uh, you notice there's a small amount of cabin delta. I couldn't get the weight on wheels to function 100% uh, just yet to zero that out when on ground. But uh, it's something I'm willing to live with for now. I may mess with it a little further. But uh, yeah, what we'll do. Um, uh, Go ahead and roll one of the encoders, and you can see this one is changing our landing altitude. And we can roll it up in increments of 25 feet. Works perfect. That's stored as a variable, uh, as an integer. And uh, if I turn the other encoder just off camera here, this is when we're setting the manual cabin rate in feet per minute. So. We can dial it up, and uh, right now I have it at 100 feet per minute intervals, but uh, I can change that. Anyway, um, what I'll do, uh, what that does is it'll it'll wait, it takes about 7 seconds, and uh, it'll wait and uh, revert back to the other main screen. And uh, what I'm going to do is just uh, start rolling here. You see it reverted back to the main screen, and uh, I'm not on a runway, but just throttle up in the Lear and see if we can get it off the ground. Should be able to rotate pretty soon here. And we should start seeing some climb. And there you can see it maxes out the cabin rate. It's 600 feet per minute. That's all the Lear can do in the cabin change. And we can back that down a smidge here and we'll come back below the 600, maybe, it's hard to fly joystick with one hand here, and there you go, you can see us, uh, you see the cabin rate is changing in a linear fashion, uh, what I did is I did uh, some quick math on that, and that will uh, change in a linear rate by uh, by altitude all the way up to the max ceiling, which I set to uh, I forget what the max is, around 9.5 PSI, I think. Anyway, um, it's a nice smooth linear change all the way up. And uh, yeah, we uh, level off and start descending again. You'll see the max rate in descent of cabin altitude change is 375, accurate in the Lear. And uh, yeah, working good. Everything is uh, exactly as how it should be. And uh, if I can reach across while flying, I, we can change the landing altitude while we're flying. We can also change the manual pressure. No problem. It's hard to do with one hand there with the encoders not mounted, but uh, that's about the extent of it. So uh, yeah, I'll pause here. And that is, uh, that's where we stand. Um, what I did um, actually, the landing altitude and the cabin pressure are only supposed to change one line on the display. Uh, they're supposed to match up with the um, uh, with one of these, but uh, I chose to make them a large font on their own screen, and uh, it's a deviation from scale. I can make it 100% scale, but. Uh, being is how most of us fly alone in the cockpit, this panel is pretty hard to reach. It's pretty far over, so uh, uh, the increased visibility um, for setting the landing altitude on startup is uh, is pretty nice. I did trial this in the panel, and uh, 
I'm going to leave it like this in the non-scale format because uh, just for the sheer fact that it makes adjusting it much more possible when, uh, when you're in the captain seat. Um, these jets weren't designed to be do everything from the captain's side. And that's another reason I chose this, uh, this Nokia cell phone display. Um, this thing is viewable at incredibly acute angles um, from just about every side. Well, it gets washed out in the camera, but uh, being that it's a cell phone display, it's, it's designed to be viewed from all angles. So it really helps when it's in the panel. So anyway, that's the extent of the... Uh, the Lear 45 cabin pressure panel complete just needs to be mounted in the instrument panel. Thanks for watching.